Good morning, Crossroads. Glad to have everyone here this morning. Looking forward to uh, what the Lord's going to show us today, and we trust and pray that it will be an encouragement and a blessing to you. Let's go ahead and take our Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 15 this morning. Romans chapter number 15. As you find your place there, let me just encourage you as we put out the prayer videos uh, each week and encourage you to pray for a different portion or different segment of our community. Let me encourage you to really uh, make use of that and throughout the course of the week to continue to lift those up and those areas. And, and of course, you could always go back and pray for those from the week before and just build that up and pray for each uh, throughout the course of each week and looking forward to the video from this next week and uh, encouraging us, continuing to encourage in those areas. So Romans chapter 15, beginning in verse 1. The Bible says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us, his neighbor, for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded toward one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now drop down just a few verses to verse number 13, if you would. <clears throat> Excuse me, he says, there. Now the God of, of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Notice, uh, if you would there, back at verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you all with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful this morning that we have a hope in Jesus Christ. As we face all of these matters in life, as we're facing the uncertainty of these days, I'm thankful for the hope that we have in Jesus. And this morning, he tells us this. We see here the hope uh, that we have through the power of the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning, and we are thankful for the hope that you have given us in Christ Jesus. We're thankful for the hope that you have given us through your Holy Spirit, and I pray that this morning as we look at the, the fact of the Holy Spirit, that uh, how he is there to help us, to guide us, to lead us in this life. And as we have looked at the, the last few weeks and the sufficiency of the word of God as we face uncertain times, as we face the, the day-to-day matters of life, and this morning as we look uh, at the fact of the Holy Ghost and the sufficiency of the Holy Ghost, I pray that you would encourage us and that you would strengthen us and help us in these things and in these days. We'll thank you and praise you. In your name we pray, amen and amen. <clears throat> we are, of course, continuing to talk about dealing with stress and the stress of life and and the fact is, we're all dealing with it. Every time the, the news comes on and there is a new live, uh, live news feed and uh, live stream, as we read the latest updates of what's going on, what we're looking for is hope. We're looking for a sense of relief from the quarantine. And, and, and the truth is that as the news comes out and as we, every time we go to the store and things that we're not used to seeing with everybody uh, almost seemingly wearing gloves and wearing masks, the, the stress and the pressure like a dam, that news builds up and the tension and the pressure just keeps building. 
And the constant thought and question is, how much longer can this continue? How much longer can we keep going in this direction? And how long before the the pressure just breaks through and I lose it? I don't know how long all of this is going to last. I don't know when it's going to be over. I don't know when, when the pressure of every time the, that politician, whether it's our, our local governmental leaders or our state governmental leaders or federal governmental leaders, as they, they host their press conferences and they give out more information and sometimes it is so much of the same information with a little bit of new maybe and we're, we're looking for something. I, I don't know how long all of this is going to last, but I can say this, that thankfully there's an answer answer in God's word and thankfully we have hope not in the news and and not in the plight of our world and what is going on but we have hope in Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit that God has given us. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 5 that we've looked at over the last few weeks uh, telling us that he's given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Uh, we understand that through that God has given his people and equipped them to live the life that we have in this world. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, then obviously you're going to struggle and there's going to be difficulties because you are, you're wading through all of these things in life and the circumstances and the difficulties without any real direction, without any real heading, without any real guidance because you don't have Christ and His hand leading you. But as we come into that relationship with Jesus Christ, he, he tells us, I've given you everything that you need to live this life. And again, he's given us the word of God, and, and he's also, as we've seen here this morning, giving, uh, given us the Holy Spirit to deal with this life. And to that, we could say, yes, thank you that we have something that, uh, and that, that even in, in the times like we are currently experiencing can guide us and help us through these things. Now understand this, as, as believers, we have to realize that when we, when we look to the ways of the world and we turn to a godless system for counsel and the world and its ways and we are thus ignoring the word of God and we are thus ignoring the Holy Spirit that God has given us and the dynamic power that is available to us, uh, listen, we're insulting God. Now, I'm sure no sincere believer would honestly say that they intend to insult God in that way, but that is exactly and precisely what we are doing. So we need to, we need to keep this in mind, that God has given us the Holy Spirit to help us as we cope with and deal with the things of this life. Go over to John chapter 14, if you will, for just a moment. John chapter 14 and we see there, as he gave us the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, we're going to look at verse 15. He says there, if you love me, keep my commandments. Watch this. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him. As believers, Jesus said, you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And then just a couple chapters later, in chapter 16, in verses 7 through 13 there, he again talks about the, the Holy Spirit and how he is giving the Holy Spirit to help us uh, as we live this life. And, and so then as we step back a little bit farther, we look and we see in, from John chapter 12 to John chapter 16, here is Jesus in his final hours, and he's preparing his disciples for his departure. He's preparing his disciples for a, a life without Christ physically being there with them as he had been. Now, I don't think it's hard to understand the fact that Christ was gonna, going to soon die. And, and because of that, it was creating some real trauma and some real stress in the life of these disciples, though they didn't fully comprehend what was going on. They didn't have a, a complete understanding, but Christ was teaching them and preparing them. But think about it for a moment. Here are these men that had forsaken everything they knew. 
They had forsaken their houses. They had forsaken their, their occupations. They had forsaken their loved ones and all the comforts of home, and they committed to follow Christ. Now, no more than three and a half years later, after leaving all of those things and committing to following Christ, no more than three and a half years later, he's telling them, I'm going to leave. So understandably for the disciples, this is going to cause some, some stress and, and some difficulty and some trauma in their life. And understand this, Jesus' intention was that his followers would depend upon the Holy Spirit under the sorrows and the stresses of life. While the disciples, again, didn't completely and fully understand this and, and know this, this is part of what Christ was working to teach the disciples. And so as he was teaching the disciples, he assures them, he says, listen, I'm not going to leave you alone to cope with this life. Just as we tell our children, as we tell those that, that are fearful uh, of different situations in their life, hey, listen, I'm not going to leave you. I'm right here to help you. I'm going to help you get through this. That's exactly what Jesus was telling the disciples. Though physically he was leaving, he said, listen, I'm going to give you another comforter. I'm going to give you one that is just like me to help you deal with these things in life and to guide you through life. So let's notice uh, for uh, uh, just a moment a couple of things that God intended for the Holy Spirit to do for us. Look at John chapter 16 and verse 6. <clears throat> John chapter 16 and verse 6. He says there, But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you, he said, it is needful for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He said, listen, I've got to physically leave and remove myself from you so that the comforter can come. If I don't leave, the Holy Spirit can never come. The Holy Spirit can never uh, come and do that which I, have, uh, I intend for him to do. So he says, I have to leave. The Holy Spirit will come, and he will comfort your sorrow. We all have it, don't we? We all deal with sorrow. We all experience sorrow of some sort. Of course, some mask it better than others. They're able to hide it and put on a, a, a mask and, and a facade. But no doubt, every one of us deal with sorrow and with heartache in this life. Sometimes we feel as though there's no way to, to overcome and to, to deal with the sorrow. And the truth is, if we're not careful, we can begin to wallow in and to live in that heartache and sorrow. But that's not how it has to be. That's not how God intended uh, it to be for us. He, he intended for us to be able to face the sorrow, get this, with the help of the Holy Ghost. That was his intention. How is that? Well, unlike any other, unlike anything else, the Holy Spirit comforts. Sure, there are those that, that can be a comforting voice and be a comforting touch in our life, but the Holy Ghost is one unlike any other that can comfort us and bring us comfort. The Holy Spirit, he, he's one that comes alongside us and, and he gives us strength. Just as when a, an athlete sprains an ankle or a knee and, and they're unable to walk on their own, what happens? Those teammates and, and those trainers, they come out and they, they help. They will bear up under that individual. They'll put their arm around their shoulder and put their arm around their shoulder and they will bear them up and help, help them get off the field or the court. <clears throat> it's exactly what the Holy Spirit does for us as believers. He comes alongside us and he bears us up and he strengthens us and he comforts us. Therefore, and thereby, enabling us to deal with the sorrows and the comfort, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the heartaches and the, the sorrows of this life. He comforts us in those things. Because, uh, listen, as long as we are alive, as long as we're living this life, we're going to have to deal 
with heartaches and sorrows. There's going to be trauma. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be strife. There's going to be stress. But the Holy Spirit comes along and bears us up and enables us to deal with those difficulties in this life. Look down at at verse 13. There in John chapter 16, we see what else the Holy Spirit does. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He, uh, he shall, verse 14, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Now drop down to verse 25. Here he says, Jesus says, These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. And at that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say unto you that I will pray the Father for you. Here's here's what else. We, We have the Holy Spirit. He comes, he bears up under us, he strengthens us, he encourages us, he enables us to deal with the comforts and the sorrows of life. But he also guides us and leads us in truth. And he guides us in the direction that we need to go for our life. Just as when a a, a teacher explains a new concept in class, they're going to guide the student through the process and and they're going to work to help them reach that place of understanding this new concept. Holy Spirit does the same thing for us. He, he will come alongside, and in the same way, he bears up under us, and, and he uh, stands there to help us, and then he teaches us right from wrong, and he guides us in the way that we need to go. So often we ask the question, how, how am I supposed to know which way to go? How am I supposed to know what to do? The Holy Spirit is there to comfort us, and he is there to, to, to lead us and to guide us into that truth. And so, just as as a teacher guides a student through the the learning process, God has given us the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us through this life. Sometimes we get to those places and and there's two or three or four directions we could go and decisions that we could make and we're not sure which way to go and what decision to make, but the Holy Spirit gives us that direction and he guides us and he leads us so that we can take the right path and we can go the right direction and we can do what it is that God wants us to do. Now, did Jesus say he would help us cope with this life? (laughs) Sure he did. Did he say he would help us with direction for this life? Absolutely he did. He he said that he would and he did. It's not that he said he would help us and then he left us and abandoned us, abandoned us. No, he said he would help us and then when it was needful for him to return to the right hand of the Father, he gave us the Holy Ghost to guide us and to help us, to encourage us, to to lead us and to direct us in this life. So as we face the, the difficulties of this life, as we face the uncertainties of this life, as we deal with the, uh, uh, the, the current situation and the uneasiness about the, the medical landscape and, that, and, and, and those around us, their health, and am I going to catch the virus, and, and am I going to be able to go to back to work, am I going to be able to earn an income, is my business going to be able to survive by the time all of this is over? We, we, we're facing all of these things, but listen, as we face all of these things, we have the promise of God through the help of the Holy Spirit that he will comfort us, that he will, uh, he will bear up under us, and then he will guide us and he will direct us. What a great truth that is this morning, that, that regardless of what is going on in our life, regardless of what we're dealing with, God has promised through the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us, to comfort us, and to strengthen us, strengthen us, to give us that joy that we can have, yes, in the face of sorrow, yes, in the face of heartaches. We can have that joy and that peace that we talked about last week. 
And he will guide us into all truth and help us as we make these, these decisions and, and figure out what to do. But understand this this morning, my friends. We must commit ourselves to Christ. We must surrender ourselves to Christ and, 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 and allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit. If you're watching this morning and you say, well, I, I don't know about any of this. I don't understand any of this. Listen, understand this the truth is christ died on the cross to forgive you of your sin this world is going to lead you every direction but the direction you need to go but 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 christ died on the cross to forgive you of your sin and he is here to help you to guide you and to lead you all you have to do is put your faith trust and dependence upon jesus christ Trust in him to uh, forgive you of your sin as he shed his blood on the cross for the forgiveness of our sin. And when you trust in him for the forgiveness of your sin, then he will seal you and give you the Holy Spirit. And then you can understand this comforting. You can understand this guiding. You can understand this leading of the Holy Spirit as he works to lead you through this life. And so we, we would like to invite you to trust Christ as, as your Savior. We'd be happy to, uh, to take the Word of God and show you. We'd happy to, be happy to have someone talk with you, whether it's over the phone or, or uh, via a chat, that we, we could uh, walk you through a little bit more of this and, and give you some more, uh, maybe answer some more questions and, and pray with you. Or you could simply pray, the, pray a prayer right now, uh, admitting to God that you're a sinner. And that you recognize you can't do it on your own and, and you need his help and you need his forgiveness and ask him to forgive you of your sin and to be your savior. And then he will give you that guidance and he will give you that direction and that help. And then if you've done that, we'd love for you to reach out to us. We'd love to rejoice with you in that and to celebrate the new life you now have in Christ. So uh, if you would, message us, reach out to us, uh, and, and, and let us rejoice with you in that. But let's, let's take this thought this morning as we close up. God has given us the Holy Spirit so that we don't have to deal with this life alone. We don't have to, uh, we don't have to deal with the heartaches and the sorrows all by ourselves. We don't have to figure out which direction to go all by ourselves. The Holy Spirit, he comforts us, and then he guides us, and he leads us. What a blessing that is. Let's rejoice in that this week. As the news continues to come, as the stress maybe begins to pile on, as that pressure begins or continues to build up against that dam, let's be, uh, let's be thankful that we have the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us and to help us, uh, to bear up under us, to encourage us in this hour. And then tonight, we're, we're going to look uh, briefly at how, how all of this that we've just talked about this morning, how this comes into play in this atheistic and evolutionary ideological world that we live in. How does all of this fit into a world that has, uh, has these atheistic ideologies and these evolutionary uh, ideologies? How does it fit into that? Well, we're going to answer that question tonight. So let me encourage you to come back and to be with us again tonight as we'll, we'll continue in this thought of looking at how the Holy Spirit guides us and leads us and is our sufficiency for the stress we face in this life. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning and we're so thankful for your word. We're thankful that you've given us the word of God and we're thankful that as we've seen this morning, you've given us the Holy Spirit to encourage us and to strengthen us and, and to uh, help us and then to guide us and to lead us as we face this difficult and stressful hour of our life. Lord, we pray that you'd be with those that do not that are watching that don't know you as their Savior, that they would come to know you as their Savior and be forgiven of their sin. And those that do know you and have trusted in you, Lord, I pray that they would learn and endeavor to lean upon you and your Holy Spirit. That they would allow you to guide them and to lead them in this life. We thank you for your goodness to us and for your love. In your name we pray, amen and amen. God bless church. Have a wonderful day. <music>